Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. Got a fun proof for you today. We're proving that if a graph contains a UV walk of length L, then it contains a UV path of length at most L, provided that U is not equal to V, because a path cannot repeat vertices. This is a handy result because it means if we want to prove that there's a path between two vertices, all we have to do is prove that there is a walk between them and we get the rest for free. So that's pretty nice. It's helpful before you do a proof to try to figure out intuitively why it's true in your head if you can. That makes tackling the proof considerably easier. And I think this theorem is pretty easy to justify in our heads. Because if we have a walk that repeats vertices, so it's not a path, all we have to do is get rid of the time that we waste by repeating vertices, and then we have a shorter walk. And if we do that as much as possible, get rid of all the repeat vertices, we have a path. So we can pretty easily see why it must be true. So say we have a walk from u to v that isn't a path, so it repeats a vertex. At some point, we get to a vertex, we go off over here and come back to that vertex, and then we continue to v. And well, we didn't need to waste all that time doing that, so we could just get rid of that part of the walk, and we're left with a shorter walk. In this case, with this diagram, we're left with a path. So that's the sort of logic we're going to use in this proof. So we begin knowing that our graph contains a UV walk of length L but we want to be strategic about the walk we take. Since we know it contains a walk of length L, let's take the shortest UV walk in the graph. Because we know it contains a walk, let's begin with the shortest, and that's going to be much more helpful. So we're letting this walk, where we start at U, which we'll call U0, and then go to some vertex U1, U2, and so on, up to V, which we'll call UK. This is a shortest UV walk in G. The reason we want to take a shortest UV walk is because our intuition tells us that a shortest UV walk should be a path. And so that might give you some indication that we're going to proceed by contradiction. But first, let's quickly point out the length of this walk. Once we get to U1, that's one edge. Once we get to U2, that's two edges and so on. Once we get to UK, that's K edges, so the length of this walk is K, and since it's a shortest UV walk, it has to be uh, in length, so K has to be less than or equal to L. So the length, the length K is less than or equal to L. Because we know there's a UV walk of length L, we took the shortest one, which has a length K. K is less than or equal to L. And then we proceed by contradiction. So suppose, for the sake of contradiction, that this walk is not a path. So we suppose, for the sake of contradiction, that this shortest UV walk is not a path. That means it must repeat some vertices. There must be some duplicate vertices in this walk. So let's write that down. So we know there's some vertex UI in this walk that's equal to the vertex UJ in the walk. For some i and j, where 0 is less than or equal to i, is less than j, and they're less than or equal to k. Now, i is less than j, or j is less than i, doesn't matter, we'll just say that i is less than j. The important part is that these vertices, ui and uj, they appear at different points in the walk, and they're equal. So the walk repeats vertices. And since we know the walk repeats vertices, because we assumed it's not a path, that's how we know that there must be some i and j such that this is true. And so this is where we employ the argument that we drew out earlier. Since this walk repeats vertices, the walk goes on to some vertex ui, right? And then it comes back, it comes back to that vertex ui, which we call uj, and then it proceeds to the end. And it might repeat more vertices in there, but it doesn't matter. We know that it, it does this sort of repeat thing at least once. So we want to get rid of those excess vertices. Those excess vertices are all of the vertices that follow UI and go up through UJ. We can get rid of all of that. So let's write that out. So we delete the vertex that follows UI, 
and all of the following vertices up through uj. And this gets rid of that whole sort of loop that we had in our diagram. And this leaves us with a shorter walk, which is a contradiction. Let's write out what that walk is. So this is our walk, where we go from u, which we called u0, just as we did before. We, we continue in the walk, just as we did originally, all the way up to ui, and then we skip all of that extra stuff we didn't need, and we go straight to uj plus 1. We know that uj plus 1 is adjacent to i, because uj plus 1 is adjacent to uj, and uj, uj is equal to i. So we know that this is valid. We can go from ui to uj plus 1. So we skipped over all that extra stuff we didn't need, and then we continue, as we did in the original walk, up to v, which we call uk. Now, since we know we've deleted some vertices from the walk, we know we have a walk with a length that's shorter than k, a uv walk of length less than k. So again, we shorten the walk by deleting the vertices between ui and uj. We know there have to be some vertices between them because you can't go from a vertex back to that vertex immediately. So we deleted those vertices that were between them and we deleted uj. So we're left with this shorter walk. Since this is a uv walk that's shorter than this other one, which we said was a shortest uv walk, that's our contradiction. And thus, the assumption we made that this walk is not a path has to be false. This walk is indeed a path with a length, a length less than or equal to L. And that's the proof of our theorem. If a graph contains a UV walk of length L, then it contains a UV path of length at most L, provided U is not equal to V. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I'm not made.